Welcome to HITC Sport. All right, being bottom of the league for a manager, it must be fairly embarrassing. It, it kind of proves that you're desperately failing at your job. All right, so let's take a look at when the last time every current Premier League gaffer was actually bottom of the league. Right, let's go. Arsenal, Mikel Arteta, not applicable. Well, th this isn't a good start. Yeah, Mikel Arteta is one of the only managers on this list who's never actually been bottom of the league, but he's only been in a job less than a year. I mean, if you want to talk about him as a player, th then yeah, he was bottom with Everton in 2009. But no, as a manager, the lowest he's ever been is 12th after losing 2 at home to Chelsea last Christmas. So, uh, moving on, Aston Villa, Dean Smith, August 2017. They say Dean Smith did a great job at Brentford. Did he? Because last time I checked, they're still in the championship. Anyway, in his last season at the club, he actually had them bottom after four games. They lost 1-0 at Sheffield. United, 4 3 home to Nottingham Forest, picked up one sad and lonely point to the 2 2 home draw at Bristol City, before meekly losing 2 0 at Ipswich to send them crashing to the foot of the table. They didn't actually win any of their opening 8 league games that season. The man is lucky he didn't spend that Christmas handing in job applications at BQ. Brighton, Graham Potter, April 2014. Listen, Graham Potter did an outstanding job at Oster Suns out in Sweden, but yeah, he was briefly bottom once. Go back to April 2014, and when Steven Gerrard slipped against Chelsea, he probably thought nobody in football was in more of a career depression than him that week. Well, Potter was living 3,000 miles away from home in Scandinavia and was stuck to the bottom of the Swedish league. How do you think he slept that week? They kicked off the season with defeats against Lundskiel SK, IFK Varnamo, they ground out a point at home to Husqvarna and they got spanked 3-0 at Syrianska FC. At the time, there was probably more chance of a diseased pigeon becoming a Premier League manager before Potter. Christ above, there was probably more chance of Harry Potter winding up the English top flight than this former York City left back who was stuck in an early Swedish relegation battle. Burnley, Sean Dyche, May 2015. It's mental to think Sean Dyche has already been relegated from the Premier League with Burnley half a decade ago. In this cutthroat world of ruthless sackings, where managers lose their jobs for sneezing in the wrong direction, fair play to Burnley for actually sticking with him. Anyway, they finished 19th that season, but were rock bottom of three games left. After losing one at West Ham, their fourth defeat in a row. The big members of that pitiful squad have since scored in World Cup semi-finals, attended Champions League finals, and sold up 30 million pound moves? Bit mental. Chelsea, Frank Lampard, August 2019. Okay, to be fair, no, Chelsea weren't completely rock bottom of the league in 20th, but still, this is the closest I could find for Frank Lampard. Join bottom on zero points would have to do. Remember last season when he kicked off his Chelsea managerial career with a 4-0 defeat at Old Trafford? He looked more out of his depth than Wayne Hennessy in a history exam. Christ above, Lampard out was trending on Twitter. Sure, they are only 19th, and they were kept off the bottom because West Ham shipped 5 at home to Man City the previous day, but still, not a great start. Crystal Palace, Roy Hodgson, December 2017. Listen, considering Roy Hodgson has been a manager since dinosaurs roamed the earth, I wouldn't be surprised if he spent a combined 5 years stuck at the foot of the league. We all know his biggest shame was sticking Liverpool 19th in the league back in October 2010, or, or maybe it was finishing bottom of World Cup group the Costa Rica one. Oh wait, maybe it was actually losing to a bunch of Icelandic milkmen at Euro 2016. Oh Hodgson, please never change. Anyway, the last time he was bottom of the league was all the way back in December 2017 because of the selfishness of Christian Benteke who stole the last minute penalty from Luka Milojevic only to miss in a 2-2 draw with Bournemouth. I'm guessing angry Palace fans were queuing up to throw pots of uncooked lasagna at the Belgian's face in the car park. Everton, Carlo Ancelotti, September 2008. Yeah, Carlo Ancelotti and bottom of the league. It doesn't really make logical sense, does it? It goes about as well as Jeremy Lynch and humility. But go back to August 2008, his last season AC Milan, and things looked bad. They'd opened the season losing 2 1 home to Bologna, then limply lost 2 0 to Genoa. Yeah, this is the same year they needed a last minute equaliser to prevent defeat in Fratton Park. Yeah, they didn't last long at the bottom of the league, but still, a bit embarrassing for a guy who won this club two Champions Leagues. Fulham Scott Parker, October 2020. Yeah, Scott Parker's only been in charge for five minutes, but again, you only have to go back to last month to find the last time you stuck to the bottom of the Premier League. A one they lost at Wolves was the college's fourth straight defeat. And lads, I really don't think that's the last time. Parker's gonna wind up bottom. This man is clearly gonna have a managerial CV on par with Gary Monk. I getting sacked about six times a year. Leads Marcelo Bielsa in September 2012. Listen, Marcelo Bielsa has at points found himself stuck down near the relegation zone at Marseille and Lille, but the last time he was truly rock bottom, go back to September 2012. Considering Atletico Bilbao just reached two cup finals the year before, knocking Man United out of the Europa League and rapidly becoming the hipster's choice, this was a nightmare start to the 12 13 season. They wound up finishing 12th in La Liga, but conceding a combined nine goals in their first two games, losing 5 3 at home to Real Batiste and then getting spiked 4 0 Atletico Madrid with Radamel Falcao battering in a hat trick just four days before he scored another treble against Chelsea. Christ above, what another goal scoring machine monster he was back then. Anyway, this result left Bielsa and Bilbao rock bottom of La Liga, leaving football hipsters worldwide to question the meaning of life itself. Leicester, Brendan Rodgers, August 2011. Considering Brendan Rodgers started his management career like a wet puddle of doggy piss, stuck in relegation scraps with Watford and Reading, he's probably still pinching himself that a guy once sacked in the championship has wound up in Premier League title races, gobbled up silverware at Celtic, and he's still chasing Europe with Leicester City. Anyway, you have to go back nine years to find the last time he was bottom of the league. 
coinciding with Sergio Aguero's Premier League debut. The last thing you'd want as manager of newly promoted Swansea is a Monday night trip to the Eddie Hat to face a hungry team chasing their first Premier League title. What sort of damage is Danny Graham ever going to inflict on Vincent Company? I mean, come on! Yeah, Aguero scored two, Swansea lost 4 0 on TV, and Gary Neville spent his first MF looking like a lost child in Tesco. Liverpool, Jurgen Klopp, February 2015. Modern day fans might wonder why Liverpool didn't face much competition for Jurgen Klopp's signature in 2015. Well, uh, it's probably because his career looked like he was on the verge of a meltdown. Because it wasn't just Jose Mourinho briefly shoved his reputation in the blender that year. No, Klopp had Dortmund, Borussia Dortmund, bottom of the league. And not just after a few dodgy results in the autumn. No, no, they were bottom in February. They won four of 19 league games, had just lost one at home to Augsburg. I know he was a god at Dortmund, but Jose was also a hero at Stamford Bridge, and look what happened to him. Honestly, Klopp was lucky to escape the sack. Yes, they'd seen Robert Lewandowski depart in the summer, but I'm sorry, he still had Matt Hummels, Henrik Mkhitaryan, Ilkay Gundogan, Chiro Omobile, Marco Royce, oh yeah, and the small matter of Pierre Emerick Aubameyang. So given that Klopp of talent, fighting was up below Freiburg, Hertha Berlin, and Paderborn in February, just complete and utter nonsense. Man City, Pep Guardiola, August 2008. Okay, to be fair, Pep Guardiola has never been officially standalone stamped to the bottom of the league, but he was joined bottom once in his first ever game in charge. Imagine being a Barcelona fan, you spent the summer being linked with a serial winner like Jose Mourinho, and instead, the board just promote Pep Guardiola, you know, the guy coaching the B team? In many ways, that could have just looked like an uninspiring cheap option. A bit like when Arsenal stuck Freddie Lundberg in charge last Christmas, and considering he just spent the summer getting rid of Ronaldinho, a fan favourite, the fans could have turned, especially when he lost one little away at newly promoted Nemancia on the opening day of the season. Oh, the impatient fans were probably getting ready to shuck pig skulls at the president's house. Man United, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, May 2014. Listen, Man United's first season without Sir Alex Ferguson was an utter nightmare. The fans were sick of David Boyce, disgusted with the club for hiring a manager from lowly mid-table Everton. Now they wanted a proven winner fit for the club, like Rui Van Gaal or Jose Mourinho. Well, imagine telling a single Man United fan back then that by the end of the decade, the guy in the Old Trafford dugout would be the same one currently stuck to the foot of the Premier League with Cardiff City. Yeah, he was a popular Man United fan favourite, but lads, so is Gary Neville, and most United fans would probably rather iron their own eyebrows than give him the manager's job. Anyway, yeah, May 2014, Solskjaer being brought in to save the day, instead taking Cardiff from 16th to last. Highlights included conceding 6 at home to Liverpool, shipping 4 at Sunderland, losing 4 0 home to Hull City, before being officially relegated to St James's Park. Just a complete nightmare. Newcastle Steve Bruce September 2000 yeah, according to some Newcastle fans, Steve Bruce is arguably the worst manager of all time. The guy is so tactically inept, he probably lets his wife pick the team's formation. But lads, you have to go back 15 years to find the last time he was bottom of any league. 15 years, he's never spent a single week bottom of the league since then. He was sacked by Huddersfield Town in October 2000, back when he was only just starting to resemble a sexually unsatisfied middle-aged housewife. Huddersfield were in a championship relegation battle. Bruce had them bottom in September after a one loss at home to Burnley, their fourth straight defeat. But to be fair, what was he supposed to do with Darry Facey up front? The fact he's taken charge of 803 39 games since then, and never spent a single week at the bottom. How? He's been in charge of Wigan, Sutherland and Hull. He's had defences filled with Titus Bramble and Paul McShane. That's nearly 1,000 games. How has he survived bottom place for 15 years, even for just one week? Mental. I mean, to be fair, he's been second bottom 24 times, but, but still, that is impressive. Sheffield United, Chris Wilder, November 2020. Yeah, you don't have to be a genius to work this one out. Look who's bottom of the league right now, lads. Good old Chris Wilder, stuffed in second season syndrome with Sheffield United. Just one point from eight games. Lads, they're in trouble. Southampton, Ralph Hasnoodle, October 2013. Okay, yes, Ralph Hasnoodle began his time at Southampton joint bottom of the league. Well, thankfully, because Fulham had a defence clearly made of marshmallow and stale Watsits, they were kept off the bottom on goal difference. So instead, let's go back to October 2013. He was appointed English Sat 04 coach in the second tier of German football. They were rock bottom, had already lost seven games, and even in this managerial debut, they were losing two and home to Dusseldorf. It ended well, I mean, he turned them around and finished halfway up the league. He was essentially the Austrian Tony Poulos, who also took Palace from bottom to 10th that season. Tottenham, Jose Mourinho, not applicable. No, for all the talk about meltdowns and being over the hill, Jose Mourinho has never, in his entire 20 years of management, he's never occupied last place in any league. Never. The lowest he's ever been was his last ever game in charge of Chelsea. A 2-1 defeat at Leicester 11 days before Christmas, which left the previous season champions 16th in the league, just a point above the drop zone, and with the previous season's relegation scrappers, top of the league. But no, he's never been bottom, ever. West Brom, Slava Village, September 2020. Again, lads, you don't have to go back too far to find the last time Slava Village propped up the table. It was in September, when they'd just been spanked 5-2 at Everton, sitting bottom of the league. Lads, they still haven't won a Premier League game yet. They're going down for sure. West Ham, David Moyes, May 2017. Alright, lads, let's go back to May 2017 for David Moyes. To be fair, by then, Sunderland had been 20th in the league since January, and they hadn't been out of the relegation zone since August. But yeah, it was the last game of the season, a 5-1 defeat to Chelsea, where John Terry got carried off the pitch. Sunderland were 16 points from safety, with David Moyes' reputation at an all-time low. Wolves, Nuno Espirito Santo, August 2012. 
Okay, you might think Nuno Espirito Santo was too good to ever be stuck bottom of any league, right? But no, he has. Again, like Guardiola, you have to go back to his manager that you manager of Rio Ave. They lost one at home to Maritimo and ended the first week of the 12-13 Premier League season in 16th place. I rock bottom of the league. Weird thing about his squad that season, though, is that both of his goalkeepers were Jan Oblak and Ederson. How weird is that? A potential £150 million worth of goalkeeping talent at one tiny Portuguese club? Anyway, that's the end of your lives. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe. And as always, I'll talk to you in a while.